right, so this week we're going to take a look at two sections, uh, 3.4 and 3.5. So we talked about how to graph lines one way. Okay, we did y equals mx plus b, and that was called slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b, that's one way that we can graph a line. Uh, it's the way that's usually most common. I showed you guys if you want to do something like on a graphing calculator. Not that we use them a lot here, but that's what the calculator uses. y equals mx plus b requires you to know two things right away. You need to know the slope of your line, and you need to know the y-intercept. Well, if you don't know those two things, there might be another way to write the equation of a line without them. And we can do it without them, and that's called standard form. So the, the nice thing about standard form is you do not have to figure out the slope or the y-intercept. Okay? You don't have to figure out either one of them. You have to figure out something else. So on your, your guide notes, okay, on the first blank where it says the, and then there's some room of a linear equation is, you want to fill in the line standard form. Now what I'm going to show you guys first is not a special case. This is the, the normal case that happens most of the time. There are a couple special cases. We're going to do those in a minute. That's the equation of a line in what's called standard form. It's ax plus by equals c. The A, the B, and the C are what we call real numbers. Real numbers, that's just something that means basically it could be anything. Real numbers can be fractions. Real numbers can be decimals. Real numbers can be positive. They can be negative. Or they can be zero. Zero is either positive or negative. It's zero is like neutral. So basically, real numbers can be any number you want. Uh, whoops, except. Let me get rid of except zero because they can't, they can't both be zero. One of them could be, but they can't both be. So what I want to do, I want to go back to the problem that I gave you. We kind of talked about in the in the warm up, and let's let's see if we can change it to standard form. I think it was y equals three x. Does anybody remember what was the y intercept plus what? Is it plus four? I think it's what we do. Plus four. So if we want to put this in what's called standard form, notice how it looks. The x and the y are on the same side, and then there's a number all by itself on the right. So let's put the x and the y on the same side. Uh, so Abby, how about I move that 3x over to the other side? Yep, yeah, exactly. We would subtract 3x and subtract 3x. Caleb, what's 3x minus 3x? Zero. Zero. Okay, so that, that cancels out. And once we... Um, once that cancels out, we have negative 3x on the left. And we have a positive y. Now you might be like, well, why didn't you write y minus 3x? Well, I could have. But when they do it in standard form, they always put it in alphabetical order. They put the x first, and the x had a negative 3 with it, and then they put the y second. What number is in front of the y, even though there's, there's nothing visibly written there? What's always in front? Yeah? One. A 1. So we have negative 3x plus 1y equals, and Anaya, what's, um, 
What's on the other side, John? Uh, plus four. Just the plus four. This is called standard form. What you started with here was slope intercept. And down here is standard form. So standard form is just taking slope intercept and moving some things around. That's all it is. The x and the y are on the same side, and there's a number on the other. So I said to you, it's going to look something like this. Ax plus by equals c. The number in front of x is like your a. What's my a in the one that I just wrote? Yeah, negative 3. That's the number that's in front of x. So that would be like my a. b is the number that's in front of the y. Joe, what, what number is in front of the y here? One. one. So B is like my one. And C is the number that's by itself on the other side. So what number is my C? One. Four. And that's it. That's standard form. Now, that's a normal case. There's nothing special about, about this one. But when one of the X's or Y's is zero, then that is a special case. Just think about what would happen. Let's make up so ax plus by equals c. Let's let a be 0. So let's say we had 0 times x. And let's just make up a number for y. Uh, b equals 2. They can't both be 0, but one of them could be. What happens if you do 0 times anything? What happens? Yeah? It just becomes 0. It just becomes 0. So if either the A or the B is a 0, then what ends up happening is part of it disappears. Which part? Well, it depends on if the A is 0 or the B is 0. If part of it disappears, you now have a special case because one of the letters is gone. So we're going to talk about what happens when one of the letters is gone. If x is the letter that's gone, then what you're going to end up with is just a y in your problem. Kind of like this one. All we have here is 3y equals 2. And if I wanted to get the y by itself, um, Natalie, how would I put this 3 on the other side? Uh, we wouldn't subtract because there's no addition sign between the two. Yeah, we would divide. And now you have y equals 2 thirds. Where's the x? It's gone. Whenever you end up with y equals, and then you have a number, this is a horizontal line. So y equals, and then a number, is a horizontal line at that number. Okay, so you've got you've got a slot um, for two special cases. I would do this one on the left side of your guided notes where it says number number one. You can write that in on the line, and then right below it you have a graph. You could draw in that example. So y equals, and then a number, is a horizontal line at the number. So in this case, y equals 3 means to go up 3 and then put a horizontal line at the number 3. Did anybody notice it was at 4? Okay, so horizontal is one kind of special line. What do you think the other kind of special line is going to be? Yeah, it's vertical. 
Does anybody have an idea what letter is going to be by itself for a vertical line? Aiden, what letter was by itself when we did a horizontal line? Not sure. Anyone help them out? What what letter is by itself when you have a horizontal line? Sure. Y, right? So it says if you have Y by itself on the left, and then an equal sign, and then a number, if the Y is all by itself, that's the equation of a horizontal line, because there's no X. The X disappeared. So if Y equals a number is horizontal, does anybody have a guess what a vertical line might have by itself? It's not going to have a Y by itself. Oh, Sean, you have a guess? It's going to be X. So when we have an X by itself, that's another special case, and that's going to be vertical. So this is special case number two. So you could put this one uh, where it says special cases, number two. You have three lines. I would put it right there. If you have an equation that's x equals and then a number, that's a vertical line. And there's an example of a vertical line. In this case, it's at the number 5. So we would write x equals 5. And so you know it's a special case if you only have one of the letters in the problem. You're supposed to have an X and a Y. That's the normal case. But if you're missing one of them, then it's special. So what we'll do, I'm gonna, before we do example one on the notes, I'm just gonna put up a couple problems and I want you to tell me one of three things. Is it a normal case? Normal means it's just gonna be a line that's on a slant. Is it a horizontal or is it a vertical? So let's look at this one. Okay, this one, I just want you to look at. You don't, you don't have to write that down. 3x plus 2y equals 5. Is that the normal case? Or is it a special case? And if it's a special case, I want to know, is it the horizontal or the vertical? So what, if, what do we think about this one? Normal case, horizontal, or vertical? Eight? Yeah, that's the normal case. What tells you that that's going to be the normal one? It's not special. There's both X and Y. Right, there's both X and Y. If you have the both X and the Y, it's going to be some type of line that's on a slant. It's not going to be horizontal or vertical. Let's look at that one. X equals 2. Is that a normal case? Or is that one a special case? It is a special case. Now, can somebody be more specific and tell me which one? Is that the horizontal or is that the vertical? That's vertical. So that's a special case and that's vertical. How do you know it's vertical? Yeah? 
Right, you just have an x by itself and there's no y in the problem at all. You're missing the y. Right? How about that one? y equals negative 8. Uh, normal? Or is that a special one? Yeah? Normal. How come? How do we know if it's normal? What does the problem have to have in it? If it's going to be the, the normal groups, yeah? It has to have both an x and a y. Does this one have both an x and a y? No. So then it is a special case. Um, which special case is that? Is that horizontal or is that vertical? Sean? That's horizontal. Can you tell me it would be a horizontal line at what number? At negative 8. So on our graph paper, we go down to negative 8, just like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we draw our horizontal line at negative 8. It's a normal case, and then the last two are special. All right, let's try uh, example 1. It's kind of, kind of like what we just did. Except now you're just going to draw it yourself. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right, so you know, let me put. Um, let me put both of them up. So the top one is y equals four. And the bottom one is x equals negative 2. Are these the normal case or are these the special case? Which ones are these? Yeah? They're both special. I haven't shown you how to graph the normal ones yet. I've only shown you how to do the special ones. The special ones are actually easier because all you have to do is put horizontal or a vertical line at the number they tell you. You have to take Take a minute and see if you can graph y equals 4 and x equals negative 2. All right, so y equals, um, how about cadence? What kind of line is y equals? Yeah, it's horizontal. And what number is it going to be at? 4. So we're just going to go up to 4, draw your horizontal, and that's it. That's the line y equals 4. You should put an arrow on each end because that just means it keeps going. It doesn't, it never stops, it keeps, keeps going forever. All right, so there's y equals 4, and then x equals negative 2. Um, Alyssa, what, what kind of line is x equals and then a number? Yeah, it's vertical. Doesn't matter what number it is right now. I just asked you which kind of line is it, and it's vertical. Now I need to know where to put it. So if I want to know where to put it, I look at the number. Um, so Mia, what, what number are we going to put the vertical line at? Negative 2. Negative 2. So there's a vertical line. And we're putting it at negative 2. Any questions about about that? All right, so those, those are the special cases, and sometimes special cases are harder. In this case, the special cases are actually easier. All right, so let me pull up uh, another graph. Let me draw a line like this. What do we call that point right there? We talked about that at the beginning when we reviewed y equals mx plus b. Yeah? This is called your y intercept. Not talked about as much, but this one also has a name. What do you think we call that one? Yeah? That's called the x intercept. 
So the x-intercept and the y-intercept are the two names for where the points cross the axes. So we're going to put that on your, uh, on your guided notes. And those two points would be enough to draw a line. All you need is, well, you tell me, how many points do you need to draw a line at a, at a minimum? Yeah? At least three. Um, I would recommend at least three, but technically you can do it with two. You just take any two points, you can put a line through them. So you need at least two, but if you do three, it's good because it'll double check uh, your work. All right, so uh, let me see. So this part, you guys don't have to write that down yet. We're not, uh, we're not at the part that says recall yet, but you need at least two points to draw a line. That's how we're going to draw lines in standard form. We're going to draw, we're going to find two points. <clears throat> yeah. We're going to find two points and then we'll connect them. And the two points that we're going to try and find are the x intercept and the y intercept. Why those two? Because they're probably the easiest two points to find. Technically, when you want to draw a line, you could find any two points you want. You just have to find two. But we're going to try to find the two easiest ones. The x and the y intercept. Okay, so now this is the part um, where it starts the guided notes at the top and it says um, recall. And I already asked you guys this, but the x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So you have two blanks, you want to fill x-intercept in for the first blank. And then x-axis is what would go on the second blank. And Sophie, what did we call the other intercept? The y-intercept, and that's where it crosses the y-axis. So on the line below, put y-intercept in your first blank, and y-axis in the second. So how do we find those two intercepts? This is where now we're going to actually do something with, with a number. Let's go back to that picture. Can somebody tell me, you know what, let me just change this a little bit. This one would work okay, but just to avoid confusion on something. Let's put this one here, and that one there. So there's my line. Can somebody tell me, what is the coordinate of the x-intercept on that graph? Two, zero. Two, zero. Good. How about the coordinate of the y-intercept? Yeah? 0, negative 3. What if the y-intercept was here? What would that one be as a coordinate? Yeah? Zero negative, Zero, negative 4. What if it was here? What would it be? Yeah? Zero, negative 5. Does anybody notice what number is always the first number in the coordinate for the y-intercept? Yeah? Okay. It's always a 0. So the y-intercept always has a zero for the x-value. And it works the same for the x-intercept. 
If the x-intercept was here, that would be 3, 0. If the x-intercept was here, that would be 4, 0. If it was here, it would be 5, 0. The second number is always 0 when you're trying to find the x-intercept. So the fact that we know one of the numbers is always 0, that's how we're going to find it. <coughs> if you want to find the x-intercept, you're going to have a formula, and you're going to plug in a 0. If you want to find the y-intercept, you're going to have a formula, and you're also going to plug in a 0. The difference is where do you plug it in? You're either going to plug it in for x, or you're going to plug it in for y. If you want to find the y-intercept, you're going to fill in a 0 for x. If you want to find the x-intercept, you're going to fill in a 0 for the y. So let's write that down. So to find the x-intercept, you're basically putting the bolded, the four things that are bolded, in the four blanks on the next line. To find the x-intercept, plug in 0 for y, and then you're going to solve your formula for x. Now to find the y-intercept, you still plug in the same number. It's always a 0. That's how intercepts work. You always have a 0. But you're going to put the 0 in a different spot. For the y-intercept, plug in 0 for x, and then you can solve for your y-intercept. So to graph a line this way, we're basically going to have to solve an equation twice. We're going to plug in 0 for an x value, solve it, then we're going to go back, plug in 0 for the y value, and solve it. Notice, this has nothing to do with slope. We're not, we're not doing anything with slope when we do this lesson. This is standard form. Does everybody have those, those two things? All right. Let's try uh, an example. It says, use intercepts, and I don't think you guys have the equation. To graph the equation, you'll just have to copy it down. 3x plus 4y equals 12. And it works out really nice when the number I just circled is divisible by both numbers on the left side. Then we're going to get nice answers. If it's not, it's okay. Just use our calculator and figure it out. It doesn't matter which intercept you do first. We can do the x first, or we can do the y first, but we got to do both. So, Annika, which one do you want to do first? Well, you get to pick. It's up to you. You can't go wrong. You can say either answer and you are correct. Uh, so which intercept? The x-intercept or the y-intercept? The y. All right, so let's do the y-intercept. Okay, so remember, we're using intercepts, so we have to find both the x and the y. Can somebody remind me how you find the y-intercept? We have to fill in a number, but we got to put a certain number in a certain spot. Yep. Plug in 0 for x. Plug in 0 for x. So we're going to take our equation, plug in 0 for x. All right, so let's write it down. We're going to put 3 times, and Anaya, what am I filling in for x? Uh, well, we're finding the y-intercept. Um, 
someone remind me again, when we want to find the y-intercept, what, what number do you plug in first? Yeah? Zero. You plug in 0. And what letter do you plug it in for? You plug it in for x. So to find the y-intercept, we're going to let x equal 0. So in my problem, I have 3, and the x is right next to it, but we're not going to put x here. What am I going to fill in for x? Zero. zero. Yeah, we're going to fill in zero where the x goes. The rest of it is going to stay the same. So keep the 4 and the y, and then keep the 12. Um, Abby, what's 3 times zero? zero? Zero. So that part's gone. When you graph using intercepts, one part is always gone. That's how it should. That's how it always happens. So now we have 4y equals 12. And Emily, how would I get the y by itself there? Divide both sides by 4. Yep, divide both sides by 4. And Joe, uh, what do I get on the right side when I do that out? 3. 3, good. And 3 is my what? What did I just find? Yeah. 3 is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. So put a dot at 3. Now, is that enough information to draw a line if you have one dot? Caleb? Two to three. Yeah, we're gonna in this section we're only gonna do two. Three is even better, but we're gonna do two. But you gotta have a second one. So we've got the y-intercept. What do you think we're gonna find next? X. Yep, we're gonna find the x-intercept. Okay, so to find the x-intercept, first, what number am I gonna plug in? Yeah? Zero. We're going to plug in 0. And where do I put the 0? For what letter? Yep. For the Y. I know it's the opposite of what you would think to do the X intercept. You plug in 0 for Y. That's, that's just how it works. So let's rewrite that equation, 3x plus 4y equals 12, but replace the y with a 0. Can anybody tell me what my equation will look like if I replace the y with a 0? Yeah? 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. That's how you find an intercept. You plug in the number zero. All right. And now do it out. Um, and what's four times zero going to give me? Zero. So that's gone. And now I have three x equals twelve. And Micah, how would I get x by itself? Yep, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And what does that give me? Uh, four. 4. And what is the 4 again? That's my... Um, can you say it again? X. X, Y. Not the X axis. It's a point on the axis called the intercept. So it's the X intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. Now we can draw a line through those points. If I'm doing it by hand and I don't have a ruler, what I do is I look at how many over and how many up did I go to get between the two points, and then I do it again. And maybe I'll do it again just to get a couple more. So I went four left, three up. So four left, three up. There's another point. Again, I only do that if I don't have a ruler. Four left, three up. I could also go the other way. Uh, 
does one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That just gives me a few extra points to try to draw it as straight as I can. And that, that looks pretty good. Any questions on that? If you have a, a, something that's straight, like your ID, or you have something you can use to draw a straight line, you probably won't need these extra points the way I did it. But that's just how I wanted to show you you could do it that way if you don't have a straight something with you. All right, so that was 2A. Why don't you guys take a couple minutes and try 2B. Okay, so same idea, use intercepts to graph the equation. Find the x-intercept, find the y-intercept, and then draw a line through the two points. You don't have to make your line dotted. You, you can make your line solid. I probably should even just make it solid. So I'll walk around and uh, I'll, I'll help you guys out with that. All right, so first, um, let's just label the axes here, make sure we know which, which one is which. Um, the, the one that goes horizontal, which, which axis is that? <clears throat> yeah, that's my x. And the one that goes vertical is my y. Let's start by finding the x-intercept. Now, you don't always have to write next to it how to do it. I'm just writing it in case people forget. To find the x-intercept, uh, what number are we going to plug in? Remind me what, what number? Yep, just in there. We're going to plug in 0. And what letter? Are we going to plug that in for? We're going to plug that in for the y. So when we plug that in for y, we have 2x minus, now don't put y, put 0, equals 4. So the minus 0, that's gone. So now we have 2x equals 4. Uh, and Anaya, how would I solve for x there? Uh, divide, by two. divide by 2. And that gives me what? Uh, two. 2. And that's my uh, x-intercept. That's my x-intercept. Good. Now, uh, Natalie, how do I graph an x-intercept of 2? Um, go to the right 2. Go to the right 2. Yep. So whatever line we end up drawing, it's going to go right through that point. That's the first one. Okay, so there's my, there's my x-intercept. Uh, Abby, what's the other intercept I need? The y. And do you remember how to find that one? Good. Plug in 0 for x. Alright, let's do it. So we're going to write 2 times and fill in 0 for x. 2 times 0 minus y equals 4. Okay, uh, Lexi, what's 2 times 0? Zero? 0. So this is gone. So now I have negative y equals 4. That's not a subtraction. What number is in front of that y, even though it's not in? Yeah? That's negative 1. That's multiplication. So what would I do on each side to get rid of that negative 1? 
divide by negative 1. So the negative 1 is gone. And what does that give me for a y-intercept? Yep, Michael? Negative 4. So there's my y-intercept. Um, Sean, how do I graph a y-intercept of negative 4? Just go down four. Good. One, two, three, four. And then draw your line. If I use my um, if I use my tool that allows me to draw a straight line, then I really don't need extra points. I can just estimate it. That's pretty good. So your line should look something like that. Right, so any questions on the, the graphing one? Okay, so the next one we look at, we're going to do the graph together. So I didn't give you a graph on your, on your guided notes, so we'll, we'll do the graph together. Okay, do you guys already have that all printed on your... Notes, all right, let's just make sure the numbers are all the same. So it says you need to rent tables to seat 180 people, and tables come in two sizes. You can get small tables, or you can get large tables. Small tables seat six people. Large tables seat 10 people. And it says the following equation models the situation. All right. So the goal is to figure out how many tables we need, and we might be able to do a combination. We could maybe do all large tables, we could pick all small tables, or we could pick some large and some small. We just have to pick the right amount of tables to make sure we have seats for 180 people. So in this equation, the x represents the number of small tables that you buy, rent, and y is the number of large tables. Notice the number of large tables is multiplied by 10 because you can fit 10 people to a large table. The number of small tables is multiplied by 6 because you can fit 6 people at a small table. That's where the 6 and the 10 come from. How many people fit at each type of table? Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the intercepts and I'm going to graph it for you up here and then we'll do part B. So let's let's start with the with the intercepts. Okay. How do I How do I find my x intercept? Plug in what number for what letter? Sorry? Plug in zero. All right, let's plug in zero for one. So in the blank space that you guys have right below the equation, you can put down you know, x-intercept, and we're going to find it right now. So plug in zero for y. So copy that equation down, but just change the y to a zero. 6x. Plus 10 times 0 equals 180. Now, let's just think about what we did. What we, did. we just let y equal 0. What does y mean in our word problem? Yeah? Y is the number of large tables. And we just set it equal to zero. So what we're doing right now is we're saying, how many small tables could we use at this event if we don't use any large? But that's what we're figuring out. We're setting the number of large tables equal to zero, because we're finding an intercept. And we're going to figure out how many small tables we would need. So 10 times zero is gone. And 
we have 6x equals 180. Uh, so Finnegan, how would I get x by itself? Uh, by dividing by 6. Good. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. And we can use our calculator if we need to. But does anybody know what 180 divided by 6 is? If you get stuck, just think of 18 divided by 6. And then just put a 0. Yeah? 30. 30. That's my x-intercept. It also is an amount of tables that I could use. What did x represent in this problem? It was the number of... Well, yeah, small tables. So what this is saying, if we want to start writing down some answers, because they're going to ask us to write down four answers to this problem, we could pick 30 small tables. And if we pick 30 small, how many large tables would we need? Yep, none. Let's just put the letters right above it. So small was my x, and large was my y. So I could use 30 small tables and no large ones. And that is my x-intercept. The reason I'm not having you graph it is because that's kind of a big number. It would go off the graph paper. Now, let's find the y-intercept. All right. Um, Joe, what number do I plug in to find my y-intercept? Zero. Yep. I'm going to plug in zero. And do you remember what letter we plug it in for? Uh, x. Good. Nice job. You plug it in for x. So copy down the equation here, but change x to zero. Six times zero. plus 10y equals 180. Okay. Um, Monica, what's 6 times 0? Uh, that'd be 6 times 1. No. no, right? So 6 times 0, that's gone. And um, Mia, what do, I, what do I have now? for my equation. 10y equals 180. And how about, Natalie, what am I going to do to get y by itself? Divide by 10. Perfect. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. And 180 divided by 10. Does anyone know what that comes out to? Yeah? 18. 18. So this basically just gave us another answer we could put in that table. What does my y-intercept tell me for another possible set of tables I could use? Yeah? And zero small, exactly. So those are kind of like the extremes. You use all of one type of table or all of another type of table. Now, what I'll do um, is I'll graph it up here, and let's see if we can find another solution. Okay, they want four. So let's see if we can find two more. All right, so let me get a graph. I'll well, do it on a different page. Now, those are those are pretty big numbers. Okay, so what I would do to graph these points is I would probably go by um, I don't know, I go by threes on my x and y axis because then I'll have I'll have more room. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go by threes. So this will be. Zero, 
3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and luckily 30 is as high as I went, but that's the highest number that I have. And I'm going to go by threes um, the other way as well. Let me, let me just move it down a little bit. That's better. Okay, so we've got 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 28, 31. Uh, oops, 27. And third. I don't need to worry about negatives, right? Because we're talking about a number of tables. You're not going to rent negative two tables. So everything that I draw is going to be somewhere in here. Okay, can somebody remind me what was my x intercept? Yep. It was 30, okay. And what was my y intercept? Yeah, 18. Now, connect the two. And this is the part where I now need you guys to kind of look at this and see if you can find another answer. I want to look for a point that looks like it's right on the line. And that would be another solution. Okay, when I look at this pretty closely, to me it looks like that one looks pretty good. 21, comma, 6. Let's try it. Let's go back to the table and see if it works. All right, so it looks like 21 comma 6. Um, how many people, let's see, how many people fit at a small table? Yeah, and how many at a large? 10. 10 people. So eh, that might be slightly that might be slightly off. It looks let me double check it. You know what? I think it might actually be right before 21. I think it's 20. That that's a hard one to see. So I probably didn't I didn't pick um probably I didn't pick a good one. Maybe this one would have been better to pick up here. That one looks a little better. But let's let's try 20 and 6. Remember, six people can fit at a small table, and we're gonna try 20. How did I figure out 20? I looked at the picture. I used my, my graph. Alright, so let's do 20 times 6. That's 120. And how many people fit at a large table? Yeah, 10. So if I had 10 people and I had six tables, how many people would that be? 60. So I could fit 180. Yeah, that's perfect. So the way you get these two numbers is you have to draw your line and look at a coordinate. I'd say another good one might be right around there. I'd have to double check it to see if it works. But actually, that one does work. 15, comma, not. If you've got 15 small tables and you put six people on a table, that's 15, 30, 45, 60, 70, that's 90 people. Nine large tables will seat 90 people. So 90 plus 90 is 180. So getting those answers, that can be a little tough. 
if you don't draw a grid graph. If your graph is kind of messy, it's going to be hard to see. But I'm going to try to always make it so that when you draw it, if you use a ruler, it will cross at a nice spot. It'll always cross somewhere at a nice spot. So, any questions on that? Now, even though that's a line, could you pick a decimal for a number of tables in this model? No, you can't rent 13 and a half large tables. So, keep that in mind. You have to pick a nice number that's not a decimal. All right, so we'll probably do the last question as a warm up. Uh, tomorrow. It's actually it's the same as example three. It's just another practice. But the homework for tonight is worksheet on three point four, and that is on Schoology. Any questions on where to find it? Okay. Very good. Good job, guys. Two.